Hello everyone, before we start, like and subscribe. If we hit 1.5k subs by the end of the month, then I will do a Solon's progression. Alright everyone, in this video, we will be doing the updated Rogue Lineage race tier list. In my previous race tier list video, there was a lot of disagreements in the comments and death threats in my DMs, so I took in your perspectives and formed a new opinion. So by the end of the video, you should see why I think a certain race might be in S tier, or why another race is in B tier. So uh, yeah, let's get right into the video. All right, everyone. So the first race that we're going to be ranking is Metascroom. So Metascroom is a utility race, right? It has slash res, iron body, repair, decompose so you can get food. And it also has exhaust. But the reality is that nobody's going to let you hit exhaust for... Like if you're fighting a Metascroom, why would you get hit by exhaust, right? Why would you let them decompose and hit you with it? That's just dumb. And because it's very hard to hit exhaust, then I would have to put it at D tier. I would have put it at F tier if uh, I didn't have all the utility that it provides. But because of that, it saves it from being in F tier. Now, the next race that I'm going to be ranking is Casperin. Casperin is going to be a very strong race because it has a lot of abilities that it provides such as Branded Ignis, which is a uh, Respirator, right? It lets you take less fire damage. It also makes you deal increased fire damage and you get slash resistance. And a cherry on top of all that is Dragon Speech. But I'm gonna be putting Casperin at A tier solely for the reason that it gives you four lives. That is something that no other race can provide. And in a game like Rogue Lineage, where your lives matter a lot, that is just a very powerful ability. Now we're gonna be ranking Azale. So Azale gives you f like full fire immunity. It gives you 1.75 times mana charge and it gives you gate. So because of all that, I'm gonna be putting Azale at S tier. Azale is a very powerful race. It can hard counter a lot of classes that rely on Snap Ignis, and it also gives you immunity to a status that deals a lot of damage to you. And for those who want to say, Yo, Azale's only got two lives, so if Casperin's an A tier because of four lives, then why is Azale an S tier? Well, my response to that is just pop a PD. Like, why would you just not pop a PD after you die, right? Moving on, we're going to be ranking Fishrin. So Fishrin gives you four wind dodges and a uh, snarf damage boost. And the only thing that's really good on Fishrin is just the snarf damage boost. I would have to say the uh, wind dodges are pretty much useless. Like let's keep it a buck fifty here. Why would you want to get hit by a melee attack, right? Plus those wind dodges are useless against spells. So if it weren't for the um, snarf damage boost then I would have put this at D or F tier. Next, we are going to be ranking Cameo. And I gotta say Cameo is in S tier solely for the reason that it gives you 9 HP bars. That is extremely overpowered. You shouldn't die on this race. Plus, you get fall damage res built in. You get cold res, which is such a powerful passive. Also, when you get knocked, you ragged all the other people, which lets you get a free combo on them, which makes this race S tier, very powerful. Now we will be ranking Castellan. So I personally think Castellan is a solid B tier because it gives you 1.25 times mana charge. Also, it lets you save 5% of your HP because you don't need to get soul snap. And in this meta, Everyone has a soul snap. They got gate and one combat or gate and gelly. Now the next race that we are going to be ranking is Construct. So Construct provides you with a lot of passives such as cold res. It gives you a uh, res which is your galvanize. It also gives you seven times toxicity bar and allows you to move while drinking potions. But with all these passives in mind, I'm going to unfortunately have to put Construct at F tier. The reason why I'm putting Construct at F tier is because the Resurrection is pretty much useless. You can get Axe kicked, right? You can get Inferied, 
you can get Nasir, which makes this res like pointless. Also, the uh, potion drinking part is pretty much useless because who the fuck is going to let you drink a potion in front of them? Like, they're not going to stand still and watch you chug a health pot. Also, not to mention, because you probably think that Construct is very hard to overdose on, you might carelessly overdose on it, resulting in your death. Next race that we're going to be going over is Dulahan. And I think Dulahan is in a solid D tier where it belongs because it provides you baby vamp regen during nighttime and it also gives you a pumpkin bomb. And while that may be a good combo extender, you can get hit by it, which is absolutely trash. Like, why would your own like moves hurt yourself? And that's why I got to put it at a solid D tier. Now, the next race that we are going to be ranking is the Zin. The Zin provides you with World Pulse and Iron Mind, and it allows you to have 10 dodges during your awakened state. So, I would have to say the dodges on um, the Zin are pretty useless, which puts it at D tier. And the reasoning why I think the dodges are useless is because once you pop it, it makes a very loud noise, and any competent person would just know that, oh shit, you're awakened. Now it's time to dip. So it just makes your dodges pointless. Also, in a PvP game, you're already supposed to have a playstyle built in to um, dodge moves and try to not get hit, right? You gotta block uh, melee attacks, you gotta mana shield spells, which just makes this race pointless because you're already trying to dodge yourself. Why have the game do it for you? And if you're just competent at the game, you shouldn't even get hit in general. And this allows you to free up using a Dazin and use something superior such as a Casprin, a Zale, or a Cameo. And that is why Dazin is a solid D tier. Now the next race that we're going to be going over is Gaian. And Gaian has a lot of the same passives that um, Metascroom has. It just doesn't have... Um, exhaust and decompose and it also has uh, upgraded armor and I personally think that the upgraded armor is pretty useless and while I guess it does give you more resistance right L letting you uh, take more hits the armor is very slow lacks mobility which makes you a sitting duck in ganks and I would just say Metascroom is just a superior race so I'm gonna have to put Gaian at F tier now we got Hasselden. So Hasselden provides you with two times damage when you're under 10% HP. It also gives you a res that only lasts for 30 seconds before making you not. So personally, I would have to rate Hasselden at D tier because the two times damage buff is pretty much useless because if you're already at 10% HP, you're probably screwed. Also, the res is absolutely trash because it only lasts for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, you're screwed. Plus, they don't have to fight you in those 30 seconds. Now we will be ranking Navrin. So, I personally think that Navrin's already good at B tier solely for the fact that uh, when you grip somebody, you get your hunger back. And because you're like an Elder Vamp probably, or if you're in a prolonged gank, that is extremely powerful because you get to regen again. Also, the reason why Navrin's not in A or S tier is because emulate is such a fucking shit move. Like, if you're a Navrin and, for example, you emulate Light Piercer, chances are your opponent's not going to let you hit that Light Piercer. They're going to avoid it, which just makes your emulate useless in general. So that's why I got to put it at B tier. Now, let's rank break in. So, Rigging gives you times 2 mana charge, it gives you flood, and it also gives you a uh, ice damage boost. So, I think Rigging should go on S tier solely for the fact that Rigging gives you times 2 mana charge. It gives you a lot more mobility, it lets you escape a lot of fights, and you get flood, so just even confirms the uh, escape in general, allowing you to not pee yourself because you could escape scenarios where you could have died. Also, Gelidus and Fimble are very meta spells, so 
you have ice damage boost and that just boosts the damage and if you hit somebody with a fimble instead of doing 50 damage you're probably going to be doing around 70 damage which makes this race extremely powerful making it a solid s tier now we will be ranking morvin so morvin gives you feather fall so you take less damage from fall damage and you get flock which is a combo escaper so you know where this is probably going to be going Morvid is a solid D tier solely for the fact that dodge related abilities are absolutely trash, right? Come on guys, why are you trying to get yourself hit? If you're not getting hit, you don't need flop. This would have been an F tier if it weren't for the feather fall. The next race that we are going to be ranking is Ashen. Ashen gives you a lot of passives that you could have just gotten already by getting your class. For example, Mercenary Carry, Agility, and your uh, Trained Combat. So, I'm going to have to put this at F tier. And I got to say that Shoulder Throw is also useless. Like, Shoulder Throw has such a close range that it's almost impossible to hit. And yeah, I think this is just a raceless race in general. Trash ass race. Stay in F tier. Now we will be ranking Dinakiri. So Dinakiri gives you Soul Rip, which allows you to pop a rune. And that uh, gives you an infinite mana buff and a 1.5 times damage boost on melee attacks for 30 seconds. These are very powerful buffs. However, this is the only race that requires you to kill someone to even use its own abilities, which makes this race absolutely dog shit. Not to mention it gives you Chaotic which gets you to uh, be very hard countered by Illusionist. Also, not to mention the, uh, what is it, the visual flaws that the Dinakiri race has. I'm not gonna mention what it is, but it's just so shit. And it just makes my eyes bleed. So that's why I gotta put this at F tier. Now we got Vin. So Vin gives you 1.1 times um, HP regen gives you Tempest Soul, which allows you to uh, counter spells. Also gives you a Snarf damage boost. So, I gotta say that Vind is uh, it's, it's a pretty meh race in general. Um, I gotta say that Vind is at D tier solely for the fact that you can bait out Tempest Soul. And it's just an inferior version of Fishrin because both of them only have one good ability which is the snarf damage boost but other than that it's pretty much a dog shit race so i have to put it at d tier now we're on our second to last race okay which is screw and we all know how powerful the screw is right so we gotta put screw at s tier because it has a lot of utility such as decompose and the uh, detoxify, which allows you to get out of combos easily and poison the opponent that's trying to combo you. Also, screws have um, limb breaking immunity, so you can't break your legs, you can't break your arm, which is such a powerful passive to have in general, because usually when you break your leg, you're screwed, you're, you're dead, right? Also, it gives you poison immunity, which is a very great passive to have in general, and Gives you 1.1 times poison damage, which is such a powerful ability to pair up with Druid, which is a very meta class. Which is why Scroom is in S tier. Now for our last race, we got Madrasian. So, I gotta say Madrasian is in a solid B tier, honestly. Um, I would have to say Shift and Trinket Shift are very good abilities because you can get a free combo on someone. However, Druid's... And the Zins hard counter the Trinket Shift, which makes it kind of raceless, but not really in general. So I'd say B, because it's in the middle of the pack. And because it's not shit like Fishrin. Alright everyone, so this concludes the Rogue Lineage race tier list. If you disagree, please have a civil conversation about it in the comments. And uh, yeah, um, I think this is a very solid tier list. I've explained my reasonings why. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Like I said, if we hit 1.5k subs before the end of the month, then I will be doing a Solens progression. And uh, yeah, have a nice day.